All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles, the great millstone. <clears throat> Coming back at you another lesson. If you love me, feed my lambs. We're going to go into this. So the Bible describes love as an action verb. It's one thing to say, I love you, but it's another thing to show it. So the Most High is a power of actions, not lip service. Let's go here. <coughs> I'm going to go to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 2, verse 3. Let's go to verse 2, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2. 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 2. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our power, talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So we learn coming up in the church to just do a song and dance. I love the Lord. <laughs> And if loving the Lord is wrong, heh, I don't want to be right. Heh, shut your ass up. That's fake. The Most High is not dealing with a tap, tap dance show. <coughs> He's not dealing with a lip, lip service, a dog and pony show. Shalom, beloved. Brother Andre serving you how a shot. James 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See? And the loving the Lord is wrong. Heh, I don't want to be right. Well, you're wrong if you're not feeding the Lord's flock. <clears throat> and he's going to kill you. I'm going to show you. All you men sitting back and acting like women, being docile and passive on the sideline. The Lord is going to kill you. He's going to kill you. And I'm going to show you today your enemies of the truth. Period. And I know that's hard for some of you. That sounds too hard. Wait a minute. He's black, Ock. He's dark skinned. Not going to cut it. <clears throat> Let's go here. Let's go to Luke 6, verse 40. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above 
his master. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. So we're being perfected. We're being built up, so to speak, towards perfection. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? So we're not in a position to judge unless we're doing the will of the Lord. <clears throat> Wait a minute. I want to make sure this is where I want to go. One moment. Yeah, this is it. Luke 6. Let's read verse 40 again. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? So we are not apt to judge unless we are examining ourselves first. Self-examination first. Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the moat that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. So we cannot clean up another person's back door until we sweep around our own back door. How can you clean somebody up if you're <coughs> if you're waddled in mud, covered in mud, you're dirty, and you calling yourself trying to clean somebody else up. Yep. Brother Andre serving in Havashai, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahavashai Mashiach is in you except ye be reprobate. So we are not at or in a position to wipe off somebody with a white cloth and we're bludgeoned in mud, dirt, filth, wickedness, abominations. You don't want a dirty person to touch you. Imagine somebody just come out of a pigsty. They're not in a position to try to touch you or correct you. They're dirty. So they're not apt to teach or judge. How would you respond to a judge if you're sitting in front of the bench and he's covered in mud and smells like pig slop and poop and doo-doo? You're going to walk out. <clears throat> Luke 6 and 43. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. So a good tree can only bring forth prosperity, food, that's meat for repentance, which are those of the hopeful elect, meat that's good for labor. We're laboring for sustenance, 
or the hopeful elect that's meat for repentance, that's good for the harvest. We're not going to consume or we're not going to enjoy sour or spoiled fruit <clears throat> or rotten apples, so to speak. So we're not laboring for rotten apples or sour grapes, but for the good fruit. See, let's read that again. Luke 6 and 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Once he opened his mouth, you know if you're dealing with a chimpanzee or a black ninja or a wicked orangutan. Most people are playing games, starting with the men. They're eating with us. How many have been to a barbecue and a lot of niggas just show up to eat and leave? <coughs> How many know what I'm talking about? They don't bring anything, not even a bottle of wine. They just come, they're sucking their fingers, sucking on a damn chicken bone. They didn't bring anything, and they're complaining. The chicken is overcooked. The ribs don't have enough barbecue sauce. Where's the cornbread? And these ninjas don't bring anything to the table. So these are spots in our feast of charity. <clears throat> Somebody post that one. These are ninjas. They just want to come and eat and leave. They don't want to help feed the flock of the Lord. Matter of fact, let's go here. Somebody posted, it's in John 6, somewhere between 34 and 35. John 6, 34 and 35. Luke 6, verse 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So what did Yahweh shall I tell Peter? If you love me, feed my sheep. Okay, that's what the Lord said. <clears throat> so every man is supposed to bring something to the table. Every man. Let's go ahead and get this one. Let's read that again. Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? and do not the things which I say. What did he say? Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10, let's go to verse five. These 12, Yahweh sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans Enter ye not, but do what, Lord? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that is a commandment to preach. What are you men doing? Every man should be teaching. Pull up your pants. Pull up your britches. Your drawers for showing. Stop being a simp. Stop being a beta male broke back with no backbone. Get Eve's nipple out of your mouth. Stop following the ways 
of the caveman being a savage, hating your brother, hating your sister, hating the Lord's name, hating his anointed. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. <clears throat> Let's read that again. Matthew 10. This is coming from our Lord. Matthew 10, verse 5. These 12, Yahushai, sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach what, preach what, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So why callest thou me Lord, and don't do the things that I say? Brother Andre serving you how to shy. 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine in the winter, in the heat of the summer, or in the day of winter. Preach the word in season and out of season. On the John 6. Somebody posted it. So why callest thou me Lord and don't do the things that I say? Let's go to John 6. So during your Habashai's time, you would have wicked black ninjas show up just to eat. He would do a miracle. They would show up and eat and be sucking on a chicken bone or a quail leg and then leave going, the Lord's going to kill you black ninjas. I'm just telling you, don't take it personal, but you're going to die. How nicely do I need to tell you that? You're going to die. Oxygen thieves are going to be put to death. Let's go to Luke John 6. See? A book of John chapter 6. Or 34. <clears throat> Let's go to 33. For the bread of the Most High is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So this manna is our meal. Thou preparest a table before my enemies. This doctrine. What world? The world of Israel. Elect. See, <clears throat> John 6 and 33. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Yahushai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So thou is preparing a table in the presence of my enemies for being fed with the bread of life, nourished from the fountains of living waters. Let's see what these black ninjas said. John 6 and 36. But I say, this is Yahweh Shai speaking again. John 6 and 36. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. So they were coming just to eat. So these are spots in our feast of charity. They just want to eat and leave for the beer belly. A lot of our men look like they're nine months pregnant, getting ready to give birth but they won't put their hand to the plow. They're in their first, second, and third trimester, but won't lift a finger to do the work. Let's read that again. 
John 6 and 36. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So that world of Israel is going to be preserved, <coughs> saved. Let's go to Proverbs 22. So this word is money. The doctrine or this truth is compared to riches, treasures, the bread of life, the fountains of living water. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. So the word is our ticket to get delivered, salvation, doing the Lord's business, about my father's business. What did Yahushai say to Mary and Joseph when they were looking for him? If I'm not mistaken, he went missing three days. And they said, where were you? Where were you? We were worried. But when he became a man at 12 years old, he was about his father's business. So if you're a grown ass man, wait a minute, let me get this straight. Oh man, I just thought of something. If you're a grown ass man and won't do a single meal to help edify the Lord's flock, to feed his sheep, a 12 year old is over you. That's full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm just telling you. Let's read that again. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Seest thou, seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Who is that mean man? The violent man. Sleazy E, Esau, the devil. So this word and doing the will of the Father leads to salvation about my Father's business. Brother uh, Neil Lai Pila, Baruch 4 and 28. <clears throat> For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, Seek him ten times more. That ten represents seek him in perfection, weeping, wailing, mourning of a contrite spirit, making supplication unto the Lord, which literally means begging. Brother Bayan Yasharal, Shalom Barakatah, James 2 and 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So Yahushua was about his father's business at 12 years old. Well, you got grown ass men walking around in their first, second, and third trimester that won't do a single ounce of work. Not one second worth of a video. Not even what's called a short clip. The Lord is going to kill you, you wicked servant. You're going to die. All you orangutans, porcupines, chimpanzees, serpents, scorpions, you're going to die. Let's read this. Let's go here. Sarat, Proverbs. Well, we don't need to go there yet. Let's go to Luke. <coughs> go back to Luke 6. Luke, <coughs> excuse me, 6 and 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things 
which I say. What did he say? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I post that in uh, Luke, not Luke, Matthew 22, verse 8 and 9. We meet Matthew 22, verse 8 and 9. Matthew 22, verse 8 and 9. Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye? And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? <coughs> See, what did he say? Brother Bayan Yasharala. Matthew 22, verse 8. Then say it. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. Yahweh Shai speaking. Matthew 22, verse 8. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Wicked ninjas that won't do the work of the Lord. Prepare the wedding feast. Prepare the meal. Prepare the meats, the lamb, the bread, the water. Which is this doctrine, Brother Boyan Yashwagal, Matthew 22, verse 8. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways. No, we don't have to leave our living room couch. We're going to be a couch potato and wait on Eve to go out for us. Brother Bayan Yasharal, Matthew 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Command them to come back or be joined unto the word made flesh. Yahweh this truth. Brother Andre serving Yahweh that is a commandment. Let's go back to Luke 6 and 46 for the pregnant men that don't want to do the work of the Lord. Luke 6 and 46. And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? If you love me, feed my lambs. Go out to the highways and byways. Where the Andre serving in Havashai. Luke 14 and 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Bringing in the guests that are invited to the wedding ceremony to be married, which means to be joined back unto the Lord. We got to be cleaned up in robes of white, new garments for the wedding ceremony. So we are servants. That means we're doing work. Servants serve. Servants serve. That means we're actively employed. That's why the Bible says, occupy till I come. Brother GMS in his likeness, Luke 7 and 31. GMS in his likeness. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have more to you, and ye have not wept. So we are singing unto the Lord a new song, the melody of the gospel of the good news, the gospel of repentance to Israel, telling you about the wedding ceremony, to be joined back unto the Most High through Yahweh Neil Lai Pelah. 1 Samuel 15 and 23. 
for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. Let's go back to Proverbs 22 and 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. So the house of Saul, the lazy sluggards are being rejected. Great millstone is a millstone, which means constantly grinding, constantly working. That are doing the work showing love through charity and rebuking our brothers and sisters. That is in our law to show love by doing the work. It accounts for a multitude of sins. <coughs> brothers Adak, Shalom, Barak Adak. Surat, one, Surat 119, verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. See, Saul was rejected because he rebelled against the word of the Lord. Perfect timing. Brother Zadok, Sirach 119, verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. And wisdom obtaineth his love. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Let's go back to Luke 6. Well, this is our passage of life. Luke 6. Verse 42. Or verse 43. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. So if you're wicked, it's going to show. You're not going to do the work. You're going to murmur and complain. Why I got to do a lesson? Why I got to feed the Lord's flock? Why I got to put together scriptures? Why do I have to study? Why do I got to share lessons? Why do I got to pay tithes and offerings? Why do I got to go out to the highways and byways? So these murmuring spirits are the same spirits from the days of old under Moses. Why do you got us out here in the wilderness? It's hot out here. We need water. The water is too bitter. We miss our cucumbers and tomatoes back in Egypt. We miss being in bondage. We miss that. Let's go to Luke 19. A lot of you wicked orangutans. You chimps, let me tell you about the dream that I had. I got to share this. I mean, you know what dream I'm about to share. The Lord showed me a dream. Dead animals, as far as I can see. As far as the eye can see. <clears throat> I saw dead rhinos or rhinoceros. Dead monkeys and chimps all types of dead farm animals. And at that time, I did not understand the dream. Dead pigs, dead dogs, swine rolled up with their little ones, you know, cuddled together. Women, children, men. So these dead animals represent the judgment that's going to come upon the earth. The Bible says what? The slain of the Lord shall be at that day 
from one end of the earth even unto the other. Why you think the Lord said the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, America, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. And there was another dream that I saw, animals coming together in formation, like an exceeding great army. That's the house of David, gathering Israelite foreigners from around the world. So these were not literally animals, but were people. So the first dream were dead animals, chimps, gorillas, rhinos, uh, rhinoceros, how do you say it? In plural, rhinos, see? Pig, cattle, lambs, goats, all dead, laid up somewhere, all jacked up. That was the first vision. And about three years later, a second vision. Animals lining up in formation. They look dirty. They look unclean. They look unhappy. But these are the Israelite foreigners that were coming together. Poor, the meek, the downtrodden, the needy, coming together. And they were getting in formation. Sheep, lambs, an exceeding great army. The tabernacle of David is being raised up from the ashes and from the dust of confusion. So are you going to be amongst the slain of the Lord? Let's see. Go to Luke 19. I saw dead animals from miles and miles away. As far as the eye can see, all types of dead, wicked-ass ninjas. Okay? That's what that dream represented. Cave beasts littered all over the place. Billy goats. Wicked billy goats of the two-thirds. House of Saul. Luke 19. <clears throat> Let's go to verse. We got to go up. We got to go to verse 12. Somebody posts Proverbs 25 and 25. Proverbs 25 and 25. Luke 19 and 12. Or verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Yahushai is speaking again in parables. Well, this word is only intended for the Lord's elect of Israel. Luke 19, verse 12. He said, Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. So that nobleman is Yahushai. And he went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he's coming back a second time. Brother Isaiah Snow, Brian Asherala, and Brother Andre serving in Harashai, Shalom Baratatah, Proverbs, <laughs> Proverbs 25, verse 25. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. So Yahushai is that noble man coming from a far country to establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Luke 19, verse 12. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Get to work. What is that ten pounds? Perfection. Somebody post it again. Seek the Lord 
10 times more. Supplication, begging, crying, mourning, weeping, howling, a damsel in distress. I think it was Baruch 10, I mean, uh, not, not Baruch 4 and 28. <coughs> Seek the Lord 10 times more. That's that 10 pounds. Teaching this doctrine in its perfection. A humble spirit, a meek spirit, faithfulness, making offerings, making our bodies a living sacrifice. That's the 10 pounds. Teaching, preaching, being instant in season and out of season. We got to take our time. We got to take our time. See, Brother Neil La Pela. Baruch 4 and 28. And Brother Andre serving you how to shot. And if you're listening to these lessons, you're supposed to post scriptures. Baruch 4 and 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Let's go back to Luke 19 and 13. And he called his servant, Luke 19 and 13. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Get to work. Occupy. What is your occupation? The ministry, the gospel of the good news. Get to work. Men, Brother Andre serving in Havashai. Baruch 4 and 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being return, seek him ten times more. What is that return? Repent. So we're not repentant unless we're doing the Lord's will, doing the work. Return. We got to take our time. That means to repent and show our faith by our works. Awaken to truth, Jeremiah 29 and 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart, with all our mind. <laughs> Luke 19, verse 13. And he called, his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. We're not going to serve, which means be his servant. We're not going to be faithful to our husband. Our Father in heaven is our husband. And we're going to disrespect the king, the son of David, Yahavashai, King Solomon. We're going to say to hell with him. So we are being rebellious. So the rebels must be killed. The rebels must be purged out, destroyed. We need 2 Chronicles 15 and 13. 2 Chronicles 15 and 13. We need Proverbs 13 and 13. Please. Luke 19 and 13. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Do the work of the Lord. Day in and day out. Instant in season and out of season. Verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man 
to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Teaching and preaching is trading. Investing what we learn and know. Helping to edify the church of the Most High, the tabernacle of the elect of the house of David. Investing the money to build his house, his church, the building fund. What so-called black church don't know about the building fund? I'm thinking about them uh, <laughs> on King's Economy. What was his name? Steve Harvey. What black church so-called you know don't have a building fund? So you have the knowledge, the wisdom, the know-how, but you just want to sit back and work on your beer belly. Brother Boyan Yasharala and Brother Andre serving in Havashai. Second Chronicles 15, verse 13. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman, witches, Jezebels. You're going to get it too. That defy the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All you rebels that defy the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are going to be food for the birds or the fowls of the air, or fish food floating in the rivers and in the seas and in the oceans and in the lakes. The fish are going to have a beer belly swimming around fat and happy, off broke backs, beta male simps, chimps, wicked orangutans, and billy goats that defy the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Prepare your soul to become a sacrifice for, for the Lord. Yehovah A The sword of the Lord is full of goats and rams, rats, scorpions, and billy goats. Fat, overweight pigs and swine, dogs that are overfed, okay? Prepare your soul to become a living sacrifice for the Lord. All praises to Yehovah Hashem, Yehovah Shai, Hashem, or Kwakadosh. There's going to be a barbecue. There's going to be a barbecue. And some of you are a part of the menu, not coming to suck your fingers dry from sucking on a damn pork Red bone. Luke 19. Let's go up <coughs> to verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. He's too black. He's too charcoal colored. We'd rather have the caveman be our king. Caesar is our King, you see? And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading, investing into the building, or edifying the Lord's house of David, teaching. Or 16. Luke 19. Or 16. Then came the first saying. Lord thy pound. Have gained ten pounds. And he said unto him. Well thou good servant. Because thou. Has been faithful. In a very little. Have thou authority over ten cities. Rule in a kingdom of perfection. And its greatness of its glory, inherit the thrones and kingdoms of glory prepared by my Father, occupy the right hand of the Son of the Most High. That's what he's going to say to the faithful good sheep that are clean and clothed and white, not the wicked black ninja billy goats 
stuffing their face with cotton candy, popcorn, sunflower seeds, and drinking Mellow Yellow, and eating damn Skittles candy. You're gonna die in your sins, you overfed fat rats. Let's go to verse 17. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Here is your crown. Rule. Verse 18. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound have gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. Here is your portion that has been apportioned or segmented out to you. Here is your throne. Rule thy good and faithful servant. Carry on. Verse 19. Let's go to verse 20. Luke 19, verse 20. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. I haven't done a damn thing. Can I borrow your car? Some people want to borrow sugar or flour. But you want to borrow my car? Hell no. Okay? These male crackhead Felicia's from the movie Friday, they just want to say, gimme, gimme. Go back and read John 6, verse 34 and 35. Those are the black ninjas showing up to the backyard barbecue. They didn't even bring napkins. They didn't bring anything. No, no water, no ice. Where's the ice for the cooler? No hamburgers. No hamburger buns. Nothing. <coughs> Oxygen thieves. But you got to go. All you weak black ninjas, you got to go. Your time is almost up. Your time is almost up, nigga. It's, it's coming. Luke 19, verse 20 again. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. That's a big worm showing up to eat and leave, wearing a damn shower cap on his head, overweight, looking like a monkey wearing a wave cap. All of them got to go. Luke 19 and 21, for I feared thee, because thou are an austere man, thou takest up that that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou what? Thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taken up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. You're robbing from the ministry. You're not even helping towards the building fund. Investing in building, which means edifying the body or the Lord's house, the temple of the Lord. You are stealing. Will a man rob God? A wicked ass black ninja will. Let's go to verse 23. Wherefore, then gave us Luke 19 and 23. Wherefore then gave us not thou money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. Then it should have went to somebody else. Why did you occupy, I mean, uh, obtain this knowledge and sit on it? Why didn't you just hand it to somebody else? Maybe they will invest it wisely but you wasted my money. How many want to borrow money from a mob or mafia boss or a cartel kingpin and blow his money? Money holes and clothes, all the ninja knows. See, so the graveyard is waiting your accommodation. A stone has already been carved out and inscribed with your name. That's what he's saying here. Let's read that again. Luke 19. Let's jump to 
come back down to verse 23. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that have ten pounds. Give it to somebody that's useful, that's going to invest it wisely. Truth and lending, so to speak. Truth and lending, not an oxygen thief. Whenever you go to a foreign country, whenever there's monkeys around, usually you'll see a sign that says what? Don't feed the monkeys or don't feed the wildlife. Don't feed the animals, those that reject this word, that don't want to invest in wisely or edify, which means to build, to teach. Brother Isaiah Snow, Proverbs 13, verse 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Get to work. Invest the Lord's money, his treasures, into the building fund. The house of the Lord, his temple. This tabernacle. Luke 19, verse 26. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay, and what? And slay them before me. Go through the city, through the midst of the city, and smite, slay utterly, old and young, old men willing, young baby's kids, little Ray Ray, robbing and robbing little kids for bags, okay? Jezebel's, and maids, and women, witches, Jezebels. I don't need no damn man. I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't got nothing. You got to go. Your time is almost up. All this, you got to go. You have got to go. All of the children or the offspring of the caveman, straight savages, are going to be judged on this side. And smite, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children, and women, and what? And women. See? Old men willing that love to shave his head bald and shave his face looking like an overgrown baby that keep telling you to go out and vote and be a good, happy slave and be a good boy and stop complaining about being three-fifths of a man and know your place, boy. Your name is Toby. That take off the skin of the house of the elect of Israel. <clears throat> that fillet us and make us go back to being naked. Famished. Okay? Without a covering. All you got to go. The slain of the Lord is full of the blood of goats, rams, rhinoceros, billy goats, wicked ass dogs. Swine, pigs, I've seen the visions, dead animals, as far as the eye can go. So judgment is coming for those that don't want to put in the work and feed the flock of the Lord. Hopefully, this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shem, Hashem. Or Quakadash, double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations. <laughs>
to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Much love and respect to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David. We got next, Lord willing, Kwam Yeshua and the Bible, the Bible, the tabernacle of David is being raised up, resurrected from the dry, from the dry ground and resurrected from the ashes, from the graves of the earth. Invest in the boss's money wisely because he's coming back to see if he has obtained interest on his deposit. He want to see a return on his investment. Or did you sit back fat and happy? Growing two chins and three necks. And you got 20 belly rolls. Okay? Full of Krispy Kreme donuts and Starbucks coffee. Or did you invest in the Lord's money? Let's find treasure. This gospel. Invest wisely and have obtained interest to pay back our king, our Lord, his return on his investment. Of course it's being shadow banned. Sleazy E is the devil that the Bible speaks of, the caveman of the universe that dwell in the clefts of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks, and in the holes of the earth, cavities, a hole that's decayed with sewage, filth, mold, disease, and bacteria, and sickness. They dwell in holes, like holes in the rocks, like teeth cavities. That's where these cave beasts come from. That's why they always attack these videos. So, hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. Invest in the Lord's money. And feed the flock of the Lord. Palm your shirab. And the Bible, the Bible, rock the thumb. We got, <coughs> we got next, Lord willing. Shalom. Yeah, these devils are cut. They've been cut to the white meat. I don't want to be a caveman. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being an animal. I want to be free. I want to be free. I'm not a cave animal. Well, the Lord made you that way. If not the potter, power over the clay to make one vessel the devil that the Bible speaks of and to make the other vessel a vessel of mercy, glorious. It's going to be decked out with ornaments, precious pearls and gold fine jewels, and clothed and fine linen, and made white and clean. But the caveman is a vessel fitted to destruction. Pursuant to Romans 9. Shalom. Rock the thumb. Feed the flock of the Lord. Feed the flock of the Lord. Shalom.